Welcome back, Commanders. This week's tip, love it or hate it, is how to destroy or enjoy the use of barbed wire. It's cheap, effective, and can make you or your opponent pull their hair out when utilized properly. If I miss anything on this topic, please feel free to comment below. The purpose of this series is to get all that info out there where we can take it in bite-sized portions, so sometimes I might miss a tidbit. Anyways, to start us off, I want to tackle how to break barbed wire, because I've heard several people, and honestly myself early on, talk about how barbed wire placement isn't really an interesting strat, because there's no really counterplay until later in the game. Now, obviously, heavy mechs and field weaponry can break barbed wire, but oftentimes, the best place for wire tends to be in the small choke points that those units can't enter in the first place. Luckily, there are actually quite a few early game options for breaking it. Grenades are the first, and every map has a grenade crate, so if barbed wire is blocking access to a crucial path or resource, it can often be worth blowing it apart even though you won't have the grenade for an early engagement. One well-placed grenade can actually blow apart three or four lengths of wire, but it's also worth noting that gunner infantry, heavy MG fire, and even flamethrowers can break barbed wire as well. So if you have a map with those options available, keep those in mind, and additionally, those troops are also available from basic barracks. I'd also like to point out that barbed wire once laid is a neutral fortification, so when necessary you can destroy your own wire in this game, despite no other friendly fire. One last additional tip for fending off wire placement is that if an opponent shows their hand early and orders engineers to put down wire while they are still a ways off, you'll actually see the wooden support beams placed down on the map, even in fog of war, before the engines get there. So plan accordingly to get some weapon crates or move into position to punish those engineers. Now that you know how to destroy the wire, let's go over some situations of when to use it. First of all, it's best to place down early game when there aren't many options available on the field to deal with it, and as the game goes on, wire will become less and less effective. The most common use is to block choke points, which I think we've all played Border River, right? Bridges, gaps, and other locations around important capture points or VPs are easy targets for barbed wire blockades. But in addition to blocking chokes, you can also wire off cover so your opponent can't easily use it, as anyone that plays Company of Hero knows. Placing wire on cover that is favorable to your opponent around victory points or resources can be very irritating and a great way to get an edge in upcoming firefights. And lastly, you can even use wire to block resource point captures from certain angles. And while it's rarely worth the time in iron to wrap an entire resource point in wire, sometimes just blocking off an angle that's difficult to fire on or defend can be enough to make capturing the point a much more exposed maneuver for your opponent. Now keep in mind, while it's cheap, you don't often want to be spending hundreds of iron on wire. It's also often a relatively low priority option for your engineers. If there are points to be captured or tech that needs to be built, your engineer should probably be handling those first, but when you've pushed your opponent back and you have the opportunity to make things difficult, slap that wire down wherever you can. Lastly, I'll show you a few solid examples of where to put down wire on some common maps. I'm sure most of you have played Border River and seen the small bridge wired off, but there are some great spots on most maps. For instance, Deserted Tracks has great locations for both defending your own oil from capture or locking your opponents out of theirs. The long way around is never going to make your opponent happy on that map. On Industrial Era, you can wire off the choke points to the outermost resources to force some awkward decision from your opponents to try to capture back. In the 3v3 maps, Restless Woods can be wired to make the Destroyer Cannon hard to crew or decrew if you take an early engagement on the hill. And Waste has some great choke points around the VPs that you can block off early game to limit team support and potential flanking maneuvers. Anyways, that wraps us up for this week's tip. And as always, if there's a topic you'd like to see covered or something I missed on this topic specifically, leave a comment below and let me know. If you enjoyed and would like to see more, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next week for our next bit of Iron Harvest info.